all I know is that in five years' time, there'll be millions of tokens in the future. Mm. So what we are doing right now is building the foundation, the infrastructure, so that CoinGecko can support a future where there'll be a million tokens in, circ- in, 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 in circulation in the space. How do we scale this infrastructure to get to that space? Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel, Girl Gone Crypto. I am super excited to have CoinGecko here on the show today. So I've got Bobby Ong, the co-founder and COO. So Bobby, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, glad, uh, glad to be on the show as well. So I've been using CoinGecko forever. You guys have were founded in 2014. I think pretty much everyone I know <laughs> uses CoinGecko. And so just to kick off, for anyone that's watching this that is maybe pretty new to the crypto world and doesn't know what CoinGecko is, can you just give us a high-level overview of what exactly you guys do? Yeah, sure. So CoinGecko is a cryptocurrency data aggregator. What this means is that we aggregate and track information in the crypto space. So we have over 6,000 coins on our website, and this comes from over 400 different cryptocurrency exchanges. So this, uh, you can track the price, the market cap, the trading volume, uh, pretty much a Yahoo Finance, but for cryptocurrencies. So yeah, that's what we do. So speaking of, you know, having so many different coins listed, I was kind of curious to hear more about the process for that, because that seems like it would be an interesting dynamic, especially with so many different DeFi coins and ERC20 tokens, and so many people can create their, their own tokens pretty easily at this point. So what is kind of the criteria that you guys look for when listing a coin? Yeah, so on our website, there's a request form, uh, coingecko.com slash request. And anyone who wants to get their coin listed on CoinGecko can fill up this form with all their information, token information. And what we do is the team will go through the form every day and look through, uh, there's an internal checklist of things that we want to make sure that the coin qualify. Mm-hmm. So once it fits all these criteria, then then we'll add them onto, onto the CoinGecko website. Because as you rightly pointed out, there's many coins out there in the market. Right. And so when when we're looking at that criteria, like one thing that I was also kind of curious about is there's been obviously a lot of rug pulls and scams. And like these are words we're very familiar with here in the crypto space because they happen more frequently than we would like. So if a coin turns out to be um, a scam or be rumored to be a scam and it's listed on CoinGecko, what does the CoinGecko team do in response? Do you um, wait until it's not listed on exchanges? Do you put some sort of warning out? Do you take it down? Like what does that dynamic look like? Yeah, so we saw our data or price information from exchanges and i mean used to be the case that coins were traded on centralized exchanges but these days most coins are traded on on uniswap which is a decentralized exchange that anybody could provide liquidity and and list it for free um so this the risk of the coin turning out uh, turning out to be a scam or rug pull has increased uh, exponentially uh, during this past couple of years uh, so what we do is for any coins that are listed only on Uniswap, we have a notice uh, that mm-hmm. says that there could be a possibility of uh, a rug pull or, or a scam and they should be aware, you should be careful when you trade this coin on, on the website. And if there is, uh, a, I mean, the, if the coins turn out to be an extra scam at the end of the day, we probably put a notice that liquidity for this coin has actually been pulled out. We try our best not to list coins that are questionable okay. uh, through our internal checklist, but sometimes it's hard to check which coins um, could be could be bad or which coins could be good because some coins could be really good, looks good on, on paper, and then suddenly all of a sudden, like all the liquidity gets pulled out and it becomes a rug pool coin, scam coin. So yeah, these are some of the things that we do. And and I mean, it's risky, but but everyone should should be aware of what they're doing. So we try to put all these notices to to help people. Oh, that's great that you guys put those notices up because I do think that you guys are a real kind of entry point for a lot of people in crypto. Like obviously, seasoned people in the crypto world use you guys, but also you're a good resource for people that are just new and starting to explore. And and so one of the things that, you know, we've talked about DeFi a little bit already that um, I think is a great resource is, you know, we've talked about sometimes there's scams or rug pulls and things like that. But another layer on that is sometimes people impersonate coins and make kind of like fake versions of coins. And so I know I personally always 
go to CoinGecko to click through <laughs> to Uniswap to make sure I've got the right one. And and so I guess I would just love to kind of hear your thoughts just in general in the world of DeFi. You know, we've seen for the first time this month it's starting to kind of uh, go down and decline a little bit. What are your thoughts on the future of the DeFi industry and where that's really going in the coming year or two? Yeah, I think DeFi is really interesting. Um, yes, there's been it's been a summer of DeFi it went up and it went back down again as the summer ends. So, but I think we are still in these early days for DeFi, and there'll be a lot of interesting applications being built on top of of DeFi. In fact, I would go as far as saying that we are rebuilding the entire traditional financial in this, uh, industry in a decentralized manner. Uh, pretty much like. Uh, everything that I mean, it used to be we used to only have like spot exchanges on a decentralized manner. We used to have audible exchanges. Then, then AMM automated market makers came about and kind of changed the game and, and allow people to have liquidity for all kinds of the long the long tail of crypto assets basically. And then we now start to see like decentralized uh, derivatives coming in place. So like perpetu- decentralized perpetual swap, decentralized futures, decentralized options. And more and more different players, more, more and more players are coming out and each of them have a slight variation of improving all these different parameters. Uh, we start seeing um, prediction markets playing a role, uh, growing, in the, growing. And I think there'll be a lot more interesting things coming about. Coming about. So um, I think some of the interesting things that we are seeing as well, I'm seeing as well is the, the conversion from decentralized, there's a lot of these decentralized lending and borrowing platforms. Everything's collateralized at this point in time. Uh, and then there's, they're allowing variable interest rates, but there's a lot of pro, uh, uh, new projects coming out that wants to convert this variable interest rate into fixed interest rates. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a lot of, of innovation that's coming into the space. And I think we'll be in a multi-year uh, growth trajectory for, for DeFi. And I think what's interesting is to also observe how DeFi will play out across the different blockchain. At this point in time, it's mostly Ethereum-based. Okay. I think it will still be the case, but it'll be interesting to see if it starts growing out across the other blockchains. So like like Polkadot or Binance Smart Chains want to start doing all, all these interesting things as well. So um, let's see. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things being built upon in the DeFi space. And what do you think are some of the characteristics that will maybe drive um, greater adoption of other chains? You know, you mentioned Polkadot and Binance. Is it lower fees? Is it faster transaction times? Like, what do you think are going to be the main polls to get people to maybe use some of these other chains as well? Yeah, so definitely those two points are some of the key points. So uh, faster transaction, lower fees. Solana is trying to build something out with the Serum guys aggressively growing the space. Um, But... Ethereum's got such this, this really strong dominant position as the first mover and everyone's being on, on Ethereum. So I think a key factor is to see how fast scalability uh, uh, solutions come on, on Ethereum. There's been talks of layer two solutions on Ethereum for, for a long time and, and, and Ethereum 2.0, they've been talking about it as well. So I think 2021 has got to be the year when Ethereum scale, uh, ETH2 and the other layer two solutions. If it doesn't scale up and no, not, not, no, no major solutions come out, then I think the other layer one solutions, layer one blockchains may have a chance at it. So uh, otherwise, there's really no, if, if Ethereum can scale rapidly, there's really no reason why someone would want to use another, another chain. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, those, those are some of my points, I would say. So, you know, we've been hearing that phase zero of Ethereum 2.0 is coming out any day. Do, do you think we'll see phase zero this year? What are your kind of thoughts on that? <laughs> I, I hope we do. I hope we do. I mean, we've been talking about this for a long time. I mean, I think the original plan was to come out last, late last year. but So it's been postponed for a year. So I really hope that if 2 will launch and, and, and then we move things forward with Ethereum. So one thing that I think is really cool about what you guys do, and we kind of touched on this earlier, but is that kind of that welcoming nature and that uh, education around crypto that you guys focus on. I really love the, you know, term of the day series that you guys have on your social media handles. Can you just kind of talk us through a little bit about uh, CoinGecko's approach to crypto education and what you guys are doing within that sector? Yeah, so uh, you, you pointed out correctly just now, I mean, CoinGecko is sort of like the gateway for a lot of new users. And we feel that we have a responsibility to to educate the user, especially new users who may not know too much about crypto and how to navigate this space. So we definitely want to create guides and, and things to help teach 
everyone. So one of the things that we did earlier this year was to publish a guide on, on DeFi. So we wrote the world's first DeFi book called How to DeFi and we published a book in March. We didn't, we wow. were interested in DeFi, but we didn't think that DeFi is going to be going to, going to explode and take off this year. We just wrote it because we believe in this future. So, uh, so that book was written. And for those who actually read the book back in March and took part and followed the steps, which was to use Uniswap, you will have received like that, that <laughs> 200, 200 uni token. I said 100 uni token? 400, 400 uni tokens, yes. Yep. And like worth some $2,000 or, or something. Yeah, so, so we want to try to educate users and, 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 and some of the things could be simpler, small snippets like word of the day and some could be longer forms like the book. And uh, we feel that uh, I think the Gecko brand is, is, is a very is fun nature and it's very approachable. So it's not something completely serious like everything in financial industry. It can be fun, approachable and also uh, accurate at the same time. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what we want to do with content and crypto. I love that you brought that up because that's one of my favorite parts about the CoinGecko brand is you guys do bring that kind of like playful, fun, approachable vibe to cryptocurrency, um, which I think is something that is super important as we're, especially as we head into this next bull run and we are seeing more of like your general consumer, if they just see super techie, you know, math heavy content, then it's probably not going to feel overly approachable. Um, and so one thing I'd be curious to hear about is um, like just what you guys are working on. Like what is the CoinGecko team excited about right now? What's coming down the line? Like what's kind of next for, for your team right now? Yeah, I think if you think about the CoinGecko product as it is right now, there's still a lot of things that we can do to improve. So I think for us, we are busy uh, growing the team and trying to add more features onto the product. Like and anything that can be useful to the consumer or useful to us from our point of view as well, I think is something that we want to do. So, uh, and, and this space moves really fast. So we don't know what's coming next after DeFi. So we're keeping a close eye, looking at all the interesting innovation and research that's coming along and, and kind of see where it goes. So yeah, really improving the product and product improvement is our focus. So are, are you able to say any of the kind of new features or things you guys are working on or is that kind of off limits for now? <laughs> so, I mean, people like to ask us what's our five years roadmap or one year plan like, or two years plan. Like, and I always answer like, we don't really know what's our five year plan. All I know is that in five years time, there'll be millions of tokens in the future. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing right now is building the foundation, the infrastructure so that CoinGecko can support a future where there'll be a million tokens in, circu in, 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 in circulation in the space. How do we scale this infrastructure to get to that space? I mean, some of the things that we have done in the past few months are like adding uh, the yield farming page on CoinGecko. So we yeah. were super into yield farming. So we started tracking all these yield farms and seeing where are these, um, the, the highest yielding farms. So we, we we track all this thing and make it easier for everyone to look at it. Uh, some of the things that we do did in the past few months as well was adding the total value lock and then we calculate the, uh, the TVL over market cap ratio. And then we also did the fully deleted valuation. So uh, added fully deleted valuation numbers on CoinGecko. So we started doing more of these uh, fundamental metrics on CoinGecko because people start looking into these things and try to compare different coins on a more fundamental basis. Uh, we started doing a portfolio on CoinGecko because that's been a feature that people have been asking for years right now right. Uh, from 2015, the early days as well, 2014, 2015. And we finally found a resource and time to add on to the website and also put on the, web, on the, on the app as well. So there's a lot of these uh, incremental improvements and, and portfolio is quite a big feature by itself. So there's, you, can, you can think of portfolio as a very, I mean, from a basic point of view, it's just you have a coin, you have to select how many coins you have and how many coins you buy and sell. And then you kind of manually input everything. But you can also think of portfolio as at the extreme end where you have API key integration with all centralized exchanges mm -hmm. and it pulls in all the data and, and, and calculates your portfolio in, in real time. Or you can, for example, input like your Ethereum address and then it calculates your portfolio as well. So portfolio is wow. quite a wide range. So we're starting with the simplest and the most rudimentary method first and then we try to improve over time so so those are some of the the things that we that we think about in coin gecko 
No, that's exciting. And portfolio management is definitely, I mean, it's the thing we all use every day, right? We check, we get up in the morning and we, you know, refresh our whatever. A lot of people use Blockfolio or whatever they're using now, um, you know, and so that's really great. You guys are building that functionality and that you're looking kind of down the line at how can we make this even more efficient or accurate by letting people kind of have these different plugins within that. And so it's really exciting to hear about everything that you guys have not only done for the crypto space, but kind of what you're working on and what you're building looking forward. And just getting to hear your thoughts on DeFi has been super interesting as well. So, uh, Bobby, I just wanted to say thanks so much for taking the time to come on the show. Um, If people want to go check out CoinGecko and maybe connect with you guys online, where should they go next? Go to coingecko.com and follow our Twitter and Telegram at CoinGecko. That's where the interactions happen. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you again so much, Bobby. (laughs) Thank you.